Are you ready to embark on an unforgettable journey to a land like no other? Say hello to Bhutan, the most isolated country in the world, nestled amidst the majestic Himalayas. From its mystical monasteries to breathtaking landscapes and the warm hospitality of its people, Bhutan offers a truly unique experience that will leave you in awe. Join us as we embark on this extraordinary voyage through the land of gross national happiness. Let's go! 1. Bhutan is a tiny nation located in the eastern Himalayas sandwiched between India to the south and Tibet to the north. 2. Bhutan is the only carbon-negative country in the world, which means that it absorbs more carbon dioxide than it produces. 3. Bhutan was isolated entirely from the world until 1974, when media was allowed to cover the new king's coronation, about 64 years since it was founded. 4. The Tiger's Nest, also known as Takstang Palfug Monastery, is one of the most prominent places to visit in Bhutan and fascinates photographers, adventurers, and pilgrims alike. The complex hangs to a cliff which makes it all the more unique and fascinating. The monastery is surrounded by hills blanketed with the lush green cover of forests. 5. There are no traffic lights in Bhutan. Roads are a rather dangerous adventure in Bhutan with steep curves in the mountainous regions. Herds of animals like cows and buffaloes can be found freely roaming on these roads. Even people stop to greet each other in the middle of the way. 6. Bhutan does not believe in GDP as an indicator of economic growth and development. It has introduced another measurement known as gross national happiness. What do you think about this? Let us know your views in the comments section below. 7. Radio broadcasting did not begin in Bhutan until 1973. In a similar vein, television and the internet did not arrive in this isolated kingdom until 1999. Up until 1960, Bhutan had no roads, no electricity, no automobiles, and no postal system. 8. Punaka Zong, which literally translates to the Palace of Great Happiness or Bliss, is hugely popular among tourists for its impressive architecture. This Zong has a massive historical significance as it is the place where all of Bhutan's kings have been crowned. The building displays the typical architecture of Bhutan in Tibet and is a treat to a spectator's eyes. To witness the Zong at its best, visit during spring when the beauty of its surroundings blooms with jacaranda trees and the lush green hills in its backdrop. The confluence of Po Chu and Mo Chu rivers by the Zong makes it appear even more picturesque. 9. There are no homeless people in Bhutan, so it is unlikely that you will find anyone living on the streets. Anyone who does not have a roof over their head can ask for an audience with the king. He will then provide the person with land they can use to build a house. 10. If you are addicted to smoking, you may not want to visit Bhutan. It has banned the sale of cigarettes and tobacco because smoking is considered a sin. It is also believed that tobacco grew out of a demoness's blood. 11. Paro Airport, the only international airport in Bhutan, is on the list of the most dangerous airports in the world thanks to the Himalayan range of mountains and a very narrow runway. The pilots take off and land manually, and only eight pilots are qualified to fly from this airport. 12. When was the last time you forgot a close one's birthday? Fortunately, Bhutanese do not have this issue. One thing that is quite interesting about Bhutan is the fact that all citizens officially become a year older on New Year's Day. If people forget their birthday due to illiteracy or some other reason, it is easier to remember it by celebrating on New Year. 13. Bhutanese language is full of funny yet meaningful sayings. One of them is Chap Far Ka Chap Jil Pa Chaka Re, which literally means that the rain falls yonder but the drop strikes here. It is used whenever someone wants to say that indirect remarks hit the target. 14. Gangkar Puensum is the highest mountain in Bhutan and has never been conquered. It has an elevation of 7,570 meters. Bhutan has prohibited access to the mountain since 1987. Before that, many unsuccessful attempts were made to climb the mountain. 15. Bhutanese are not allowed to kill any animals or birds. They take environmental conservation pretty seriously. However, they do eat meat quite a lot. All the meat is imported from other countries. However, the government has been thinking of banning its consumption altogether. 16. Women head the families and run all businesses from shops to farms. They even inherit properties, and a man moves into the house of his wife after marriage. 
Looks like feminism isn't much of an issue here in Bhutan. 17. The traditional architecture of Bhutan is so precious that the method of building it is being codified. The multicolored wood, small arched windows, and sloped roofs are definitely prominent features of the architecture in Bhutan. In fact, the kingdom's grandeur architecture has inspired other building designs around the world. 18. Ha Valley, which is situated only 13 miles away from the India-China border, connects major Bhutanese villages like Chuka, Paro, and Samsi. It is counted among the top tourist places in Bhutan that you must visit. It stretches over an area of 1,700 square kilometers. 19. The black-necked cranes are revered by Bhutanese. They migrate from the Tibetan Plateau to central eastern regions of Bhutan into Fujika Valley during November, and the locals celebrate a festival every year to welcome these endangered birds. 20. Bhutanese also love flaunting their traditional attires, go for men and kira for women, which consists of knee-length wear for men and a blouse and a skirt for women with additional accessories. It is mandatory for the Bhutanese to wear their traditional dress to schools, public offices, Bhutanese government holidays, and Bhutan festivals. 21. One of the traditions followed is that the duration for which men wear stockings underneath go is decided by the main monk who retreats to lower valleys after the period starts. Whenever the announcement is made marks the beginning of the winter months and the stocking or socks come out. 22. The Bhutanese like their food with spices, especially with chilies, which they often eat raw during lunch and dinner despite them being used in the food generously. So, if you aren't used to spicy food, you might want to request them ahead of time when you place your order. 23. Also known as the Buddha Dordenma, the Buddha Point in Thimphu is one of the tallest statues of Lord Buddha in the world, standing at a height of over 206 feet. This gigantic statue of Buddha Shakyamuni is made of bronze and gilded in gold. Seated in Padmasana, the Buddha has a peaceful meditative expression that will instill a sense of calm in your soul. His right hand is in Bhuimsparha Mudra and his left hand is holding an alms bowl. 24. It was believed that there were dragons who lived in the Himalayan mountains. Lightning strikes during thunderstorms were thought to be fire from the mouth of a dragon. This is why the country is called Druk Yul, which means the land of the dragons. 25. Located in the Gaza district of Bhutan, Gaza Shachu is a collection of wonderful natural hot springs. Though the country offers you several refreshing experiences, this one will help you truly relax. 26. When someone offers you food, you might not want to refuse out of politeness, but it is part of the culture to refuse food for the first time. Doing this shows that you are grateful and you have respect for the locals. If you are traveling for the first time and someone offers you food, just smile and say, Mishu. 28. Around 70% of the hydroelectric power is exported from Bhutan to India. 29. The marriage laws in the country are strict and they don't encourage marriage between a citizen and a foreigner. If you do this, you will receive penalties for your entire life and there will be a lot of other consequences. Because of this, no one marries a foreigner in the country. 30. The old name of Bhutan was Lo Man, Lo meaning south and Man meaning darkness. As such, it was known as the Southern Land of Darkness. It was so called because in ancient times, Buddhism already had a strong following in India and Tibet, but not in Bhutan, so it was not yet enlightened by religion. 31. Bhutan's king, Yigme Singye Wanchuk, abdicated to allow the country to become a democracy. Elections were held in 2005, making Bhutan a constitutional monarchy. This selfless act of the king was made because he knew that the kingdom may not always have an honest king. 32. The takin is the national animal of Bhutan. Also known as the new goat or cattle chamoy, the takin resembles the moose without the antlers. It dwells in altitudes of about 3,000 to 15,000 feet. 33. The most beloved drink in Bhutan is the suja, a yak butter tea that has been a favorite of many Bhutanese since the 7th century. The drink is made by boiling tea leaves, straining them, and churning the liquid in a wooden cylinder with yak butter. Salt and or pepper may be added as well. Suja is a high-calorie drink that is perfect for cold regions. 34. The population of Bhutan is made up of three major ethnic groups, 
the Galops, the Sharchops, and the Nepalese, La Champas. The Galops are the descendants of Tibetan immigrants who began arriving in Bhutan around the 9th century. They are the dominant group in northern, central, and western Bhutan. Nowadays, the Nalops dominate the political and religious life of Bhutan. The Sharchop share some of the cultural traits that link them with the peoples of Southeast Asia, and they probably migrated to Bhutan a long time ago, before the arrival of the Nyalop from Myanmar or the state of Assam in India. The Sharchops are mostly found in eastern Bhutan. The Nepalese, Lachampas, can be found in the south and southwestern Bhutan. They are the most recent arrivals in Bhutan and began immigrating into the country in the first half of the 19th century. 35. Dzongkha is the sole official language of Bhutan. It is the mother tongue for about one-third of Bhutan's population, and the majority of the population speaks it as a second language. Dzongkha is a member of the Sino-Tibetan language family and is written in the Tibetan script. Thank you for watching. Which country would you want us to cover in the next video? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe.